Love can be hard, right? Sometimes you just need some of that common sense advice that is unfortunately not all that common anymore. And that's why you might need the Love Doctors. Love Doctors. Love Doctors. You are the love gurus. My girlfriend and I have been together for almost four years. She celebrates and expects me to celebrate a lot of anniversaries, and it gets to be kind of stressful. She has sent me Google Calendar requests for the anniversary of the first night we met, our first date, the day we became exclusive, the day we became Facebook official, the day that we first consummated our relationship, and all these things she expects some sort of acknowledgement of. And all of this happened within the course of the same four to six months. So I have all of these things that I think I'm expected to celebrate and take her out for dinner for or buy her a gift for happening in a very brief window of time each year. I think it is ridiculous and I can't handle it anymore. If we actually get engaged and married, what would happen then? Are we going to have to celebrate even more anniversaries? I think that we need to knock it off a couple of years in or do I just go along with it? I agree. It is ridiculous. However, when you talk to her about this, do not use that term. Do ridiculous. Not, don't call it ridiculous. It is too much. I do like, though, that she's not expecting you to remember everything. She gave you a calendar. That was nice. That yeah, was nice. However, you do not need to celebrate that stuff. And you just have to sit her down and say, I love being with you. And I love that you remember all these dates and they're so important to you. However, these are not things we are, are going to celebrate. We can't celebrate every little thing we do i get celebrating your anniversary but all those other little when we first met or did first kiss that's just it's too much i might be horribly wrong here and it's a bit of a dice roll i kind of think that if you were to to you know get engaged and they get married and you had an actual wedding anniversary i have this funny feeling that would become the focus and that these other things would sort of fade off. That's just what you have to celebrate now. You know? That's what you have. I think, though, if she's constantly remembering all these other dates, she's just going to add that to the mix, and then you're just going to have more things to celebrate. That's true. <laughs> I'd like to think that maybe that wouldn't be the focal point. It's hard to say, honestly. Do you do you actually sit down and you say, listen, I think it's too much. Can, can we maybe pick one? Just Pick the one. anniversary. Say, I think if we're doing the celebrations and buying gifts, then we only do it for the anniversary, not the first day we kissed and all those little milestones, stepping stones, because you can't, you're going to celebrate everything. I will tell you this, on the anniversary of the first time that you, mm -hmm, you probably always guaranteed to get something <laughs> that day. So that, I mean, there's that. Love doctors, love doctors, you have the love gurus. So I am engaged to my girlfriend. But I now feel weird about the wedding and our entire situation. As it turns out, my fiancé had been previously engaged. I did know this, but what I did not know is that she had planned the entire wedding and is now reusing all her unused ideas that were her original ideas for the wedding that never happened. Using the same music playlist that she'd had put together, the same dress even that she'd picked out, same everything for our wedding. I kind of feel like I'm just plugged in to the wedding when she could have had a different guy standing there you know, a couple of years earlier. Can I make issue over this, or am I being silly? I don't think you're being silly at all. It does seem like she's just waiting for somebody to come in, and I need somebody to fill the spot for the groom, because I have everything else planned out already. You're getting no say. She's already planned this with her ex. I don't like that she's reusing everything. Change things. I get there's things you have your heart set on and that you want in your wedding, but keeping everything the same? Mm-mm. So, I yes, but I think the best way for there to be differences would be for them to be based off your input and your taste and things that you are you're mm -hmm. excited about, sir. Because just because she's not in that relationship anymore doesn't mean her taste in music has changed. Doesn't mean her favorite songs have changed. Doesn't mean her favorite colors have changed. Like there's certain things that they're not gonna change, right? That's just what she likes. And it's not like she actually had the wedding. And I'm guessing the first time around had very little to do with the guy in the first place. She was just picking out things that she liked. So I think the best way to enact some change would be if it was stuff that you had input on and you helped choose. That's what I was going. Can you ask, like, tell her that you'd be interested in helping out and planning the wedding and that you would like to have some input? That would be, I think, probably better than you being like, I'm mad that you're picking stuff you would have married Chad with. Eh, just weigh in, help out a little bit. I still don't like the 
whole idea of her keeping everything the same. It seems like she's just trying to find somebody to fill the spot of the groom. It feels weird. It does. Mm -hmm. Best way to fix it would be just to weigh in. Have some differing opinions. Oh, I'd really love this. Let's try this instead. What do you think of this? Pick some things together. Yeah, but now you, if you're going to do that, you have to come prepared. Have that list. Have what you want at the wedding. You can't just say, can I help you? And then she's like, okay, well, what would you like to change or do? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, no. it's like if uh, when you'd met Steven, he lived in a house that he'd bought with his ex. But you guys were like, well, we probably, well, let's hang on to this for a while. This is a great house. You'd have probably come in and painted it, put your own mm -hmm. furniture on it. You'd have put your touch on it. Put your touch on the wedding. That, but you just have to come with some ideas. It, well, there is that, too. Love doctors, love doctors, you know the love gurus. I have a problem. My boyfriend and I have been together for just over a year. We've even talked about the M word. I assume that's marriage. I don't know why it's the M word. And having a family. We met at a party, and I thought he was really cute from the start. Immediately, I was attracted to him. Uh, but he had this massive beard, which I love, was a huge part of that. Anyway, he got a new job, and I guess they encouraged him to be clean-shaven, and now I'm really not attracted to him at all. I know this is his dream job, but I miss the beard. What do I do? Get out of here. Are you in love with the guy, or are you in love with the beard? It'd be one thing if he just did it for kicks, mm -hmm. but because it's uh, it was for a job. His I mean, dream job, she his called dream it. Job. There's probably not much that can be done about it, unfortunately. And I do agree that sometimes after seeing somebody with facial hair and then when they shave it all off they look like a baby it's weird seeing the naked face yeah i wonder if you just get used to it i mean if he had like mm -hmm. a especially if it was like a good sized beard and then suddenly that's gone it's gonna take you a minute i i would give it a bit you'll probably get used to it yeah you're still attracted to who he is it's just strange to see him without the facial hair now boo to the job that doesn't allow beards boo to them Maybe he's doing some sort of manual labor where his beard could get stuck, get caught somewhere. Got my beard stuck in the blizzard machine again. <laughs> that, is that kind of what you're thinking? Yeah. I, I kind of wondered. I did. Coming up next.